Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the status report highlight for the 16th of May 2017. And we're going to start off straight away here with creative director Brian Hicks talking about the walkie-talkie and his hope to make it a starter gear for your character in DayZ. For Peter and I, the immersion of radios themselves paired with the fact that they effectively serve as an opt-in global VoIP is incredibly attractive. As I'm sure you all recall, we increased their range greatly several builds back. Aside from availability of the radios themselves and consumption of batteries, Brian thinks they represent where we'd like global VoIP to be, so he encourages us all to utilize them more so he can convince Peter that they should totally be a player starting gear. Personally for me, I wouldn't be bothered either way really, but let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on a walkie-talkie as starting gear. But for now, let's move on to lead producer Yujin. Hey guys, first things first, I want to share the conclusion to the story I mentioned here the last time. We managed to fix the crash. This means that everything seems to be in place for 0.62 on Experimental, and I can't wait for you guys to play with the new environment and visual sounds. For those that don't recall, Eugen mentioned in the previous status report that the April release of the 0.62 experimental build was delayed due to this crash. With it now being fixed, we could see 0.62 experimental any day now. Eugen then goes on to say, instead of focusing on systems and technology, we are finally making a game. The core gameplay loop is our focus now, split into melee combat, ranged combat, player character and its interaction with the world and the infected, and their interactions with the world. All these pieces we have been building are slowly getting playable. There are still hurdles along the way and ahead of us, but that's how development works. What we're doing now is obviously one of the most critical parts of DAISY development. But all these previous decisions to create tech first, which is what's been taking time up until this point, and focus on enjoyable experience later, are going to benefit the game and gameplay in the long run. To give a glance at the current open development items in our teams, programmers, AI script implementation, zombie behavior script representation, inventory and item conditions, item spawn definition, user actions in multiplayer, network traffic optimization, sound event manager, performance optimizations and multi-threading changes, input changes, navigation changes, hit reaction on player, tons of crash fixing, tons of bug fixing. Animators, weapon mechanics animation polishing, unjamming reloads, inverse kinematics poses, hit reactions on player, melee combat prototype, ranged combat prototype. Designers, user actions in multiplayer, player representation, new player and item spawn definition, inventory UI refactor, radial menu for gestures, soft skills, player action targeting. Audio, positional environment audio, infected audio recording preparation, Player and Weapon Animation Event Setup QA Playtesting the 0.62 update 0.62 Feature Testing Internal Client Stabilization And finally Art Tree Fire Geometry Buildings Optimization Door Unification Whew, That's quite a list being worked on as we speak. Now let's move on to lead designer Peter, who has been looking at the central economy and there were some changes made in terms of loot spawning and its definition for beta version. After introduction of the new system, we managed to get from more than 1 million spawn points. Mind that was after massive reduction for 0.61 version from 4 million plus spawn points to current 130,000 used. And at the end, what matters the most is increased server performance. Next up, map designer Mark Gill wants to talk a little bit about the work he's been doing on the new Chernerous Forests for the visual fidelity update of 0.62. And the part that caught my eye was the more natural, lower height bush rows, bushier than before. Of course, the forests themselves are slightly more dense in parts and more varied, but in regards to the bushier hedge line, this helps block some sight in and out of a deep forest. While much thinner than reality, this balanced result is an important improvement to the visuals as well as the gameplay. Moving as an individual or in a group, in and out of the forest should be a more significant shift as well as hiding. While you may feel safe and hidden within the deep forest sections, there is also the opposite of not knowing who may be nearby. And finally, senior map designer Adam. We are currently really busy with the map tweaking to make sure we can deliver the new Cherneris in best possible shape we can in the given time. Please keep in mind that update 0.62 has touched almost every corner of Chernerus, and while we do our best to make sure everything will look just like we wanted, there will be some minor map-related issues. Also keep in mind that Point 0.62 contains initial changes to the whole western border, completely getting rid of the old terrain and object layout and replacing it with much more detailed landscape and layout. This work, labelled as Western Expansion, is however split into several phases and more additions and fixes are planned for later updates. And that right there, boys and girls, just that Western expansion is a huge job. I would not want to do that myself. 
Additionally, in the January 24th status report, Adam promised that he will show us the new railway stone bridge. So here it is, coming in 0.62 along with many additional changes to the railway network of Chernerus. And there we go guys, that's the status report highlight for this week. Hope you enjoyed the information and we got some nice screenshots as well. Personally, I'm looking forward to exploring these new denser forests and seeing what gameplay changes they offer. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this week's status report. A lot of work has been done, but it's still going to be a while before we see the fruits of their labor. As always, I recommend you read the status report in full yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. And all links will be in the description below. Remember to leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot, and subscribe if you're feeling frisky. And I'll see you peeps next time.